in praying the stations if we imagine ourselves walking with jesus on this journey we then link our reflection to the joys and sorrows that we experience on our life journey as families and communities we are also witnesses to the joys and sufferings of others jesus's unjust execution can lead us to reflect on his care for people throughout the world who lack basic human needs and fundamental human rights let us be alert to what god is saying to us in the depth of our hearts in the name of the father amen. and of the son and of the amen. holy spirit amen the first station jesus is condemned to death we adore you o christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world hands bound jesus is dragged back and forth between pilate and herod every step is a torture to his battered and bruised body jesus knew that other than divine authority no human authority could set him free the influence of majority would hold sway his were the blessed feet that had brought good news to all people yet as he finally stands before the crowd he hears every voice shout for the release of a seasoned criminal barabbas jesus a man of wisdom and stature taught his followers many soul lifting prayers and imparted pearls of wisdom to them the beatitudes were one among them he now practiced what he preached Blessed are you when people abuse and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you falsely on my account Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven In the face of persecution and abuse can we rejoice and continue to be the good news to others and lead them to become proclaimers of the kingdom of God loving jesus you found the strength against all odds to continue to love your enemies grant me a largeness of heart so that i too can reach out to all men and bring them to an awareness of you through my acts of mercy and compassion have mercy on us o lord have mercy on us the second station jesus takes up the cross we adore you o christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world jesus fatigued as he is willingly embraces the heavy cross with faltering steps the helpless lamb the mightiest of all creatures begins the gradual ascent up the mount to be slain in total surrender to the father he did so in order to purchase men for god with his blood after peter's confession of him as the christ jesus predicted that the son of man must suffer many things he would be rejected by the elders chief priests and teachers of the law killed and on the third day be raised to life he also emphasized that to be his follower one must deny himself and take up his cross daily for whoever loses his life for him will save it what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit his very self saint ignatius of loyola used these very words in the conversion of saint francis xavier formerly a proud autocratic ambitious man wanting to accomplish great deeds in the world francis saw the kingdom of god before he tasted death and is now in the glory of the father and of the holy angels may these very words of saint ignatius of loyola be deeply embedded in our hearts too and taking after saint francis xavier our patron saint of goa 
seek to emulate him. Creator God, Saint Francis Xavier became your instrument to bring into your church peoples of the East through his exemplary virtues. Grant that through his merits, we too may radiate his love. Live a life rooted in prayer and be a witness of your infinite power. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus crashes on the cobblestones. Searing pain runs through his being at the jarring impact. He struggles to his feet, bearing in his heart each and every one in the universe, created and loved by the Father. Down the ages, God demonstrates his great concern for his people. More than anything, he loves to be in a close relationship to those who respond to his love. In more ways than one, we have failed to respond to his limitless love due to our sinful nature, particularly an unforgiving attitude arising from hurts inflicted or received and enmities existing in our families, neighborhood, parish, the church, thus risking our own salvation and that of others. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 7 and 9 reads, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. A contrite-filled confession will enable us to capture the spirit of the Beatitudes and fill us with the required grace to grant and receive forgiveness, thus reciprocating the Father's love and living more consciously under his merciful gaze. Merciful Father, have mercy on us sinners. We desire to wholeheartedly respond to your great love and concern for us and for all people. Forgive us for the times we fail to do so. Grant us the grace and the will to walk in your presence along the narrow path to our eternal home. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The fourth station, Jesus meets his sorrowful mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because God, by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Their hearts ring with anguish and concern for each other. Jesus would have gone to any length to spare his mother this excruciating pain of seeing him in this horrendous state. But it was not to be. His blessed mother gazed helplessly at the disfigured face and wounded body of her beloved son. She empathized with his physical, mental and emotional agony. Mary's soul is steeped in grief. Simeon's prophecy has been fulfilled and a sword will pierce your own heart too. Mary offers her son a comforting balm of tenderness, of union, of faithfulness, yet again a yes to the Father's will. Hand in hand with Mary, you and I also desire to console Jesus by accepting always and in everything the will of his Father, our Father. Only thus will we taste the sweetness of Christ's cross and come to embrace it with all the strength of love, carrying it in triumph as a sign of victory. May we approach the throne of grace each day to be renewed and refreshed by his steadfast love which never ceases and his mercies which never come to an end. Let us seek Mother Mary's intercession as we pray the Hail Mary. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simon probably felt anger at the injustice of it all. After all, he had come for the Passover feast, not to carry a cross, and that too of another. However, having carried the cross for a short way, Simon undoubtedly savored the grateful glance of Jesus and the silent blessing upon his life as he dragged the cross along. Though compelled, Simon can be likened to the Good Samaritan. He carried the cross of another, though he was on a long journey himself. In the parable of, good, of the Good Samaritan, Jesus skillfully conveys the meaning of neighbor and exhorts, go and do likewise. It was the Samaritan, an outcast, who with an attitude of concern and sensitivity reached out to the half-dead victim. He stopped and responded to a genuine need with a whole series of actions and saved the victim's life. He unwittingly shows us the true meaning of being a neighbor, regardless of gender, race, color, or creed. Do we come across as good neighbor? Jesus, my Lord, you were the good Samaritan par excellence. You identified and met the needs of every person without distinction. Bestow upon us virtues of compassion and commitment that by your grace we become concrete signs of your merciful love, revealing your loving and caring face by your neighborly acts of kindness. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Prophet Isaiah predicted that the appearance of Jesus was disfigured beyond that of any man and his form marred beyond human likeness. Yet Veronica, a devout woman, looked upon this buffeted and pain-filled face caked with sweat and blood and recognized the face of God. Out of kindness of heart, she rushed to Jesus' side, dabbed his face with her veil, and offered him solace. This was the least act of kindness she could perform under the alarming circumstances, but for one that she was rewarded beyond her expectations. Veronica shows courage born of righteousness. She stands as a symbol for all of us who seek God's face and his salvation, a yearning of every believer. In our world today, where so much of confusion and chaos prevails, God stirs our heart to seek his face in every person and circumstance. The surest way of responding to the spirit stirring is laid down in the Gospel of Matthew, where Jesus speaks of the corporal works of mercy. Lord Jesus, may our longing for the beatific vision of beholding you face to face motivate us to give our lives away in service to you. May we ceaselessly search for you in the face of the poor, the sick, the dying, the lonely, the rejected and the loved, and to stop and join them on their difficult journey, knowing that by doing this for them, we also do it for you. Have mercy on us, O Lord. 
have mercy on us the seventh station jesus falls the second time we adore you o christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world jesus falls to the ground the wooden beams come crashing down upon his torn flesh with great difficulty he rises and moves on the book of jonah is a short narrative of a man whom god instructed to love and preach repentance to the people of nineveh the great non-jewish city however jonah was reluctant to do so assyrians were a cruel ruthless bloodthirsty people and jonah assumed that they would repent and god would relent from sending calamity would forgive them persistently god led jonah to this understanding of his own mind and heart we go on to read of a miraculous change in the people of nineveh but even more of a miraculous change in jonah god leads us to step by step to experience a deeper understanding of his bountiful love and his beloved children we are called to be powerful evangelizers the missionary mandate touches us personally as far as god's love is concerned no one is useless or insignificant each of us is a mission to the world for each of us is the fruit of god's love every lenten season jesus through his church invites us to a change of life a deeper conversion of heart in total surrender let us pray for this grace holy god grant us a deeper understanding of your heart and mind very often when it comes to being charitable to those practicing antagonism rampant in our world today we too respond in the same vein as jonah governed by your love lord may each of us be a mission who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth have mercy on us o lord have mercy on us the eighth station jesus consoles the women of jerusalem we adore you o christ and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed us jesus pauses beside the wailing and weeping women offering them consolation though he himself was a victim of the most extreme grief he imparts his word to them weep not for me but for yourselves and your children thus confirming that he is the suffering servant to attain salvation for the world as predicted by prophet isaiah in the book of isaiah god promises my word shall not return to me empty but will accomplish what i desire and achieve the purpose for which i sent it saint john in the beginning of his gospel conveys that this word is none other but jesus full of grace and truth who gave the right to become children of god to all who received him and believed in him hence he who believes in christ becomes a son of god and given the ability to follow the example of christ this is not a private but a community based relationship as is seen in the prayer jesus taught his disciples the our father every christian forms the church which is the body of christ and if we are to follow his example we are called to work in solidarity towards a more just and fraternal society may we uphold the dignity of the human person especially women and the girl child who in our present society 
are silent, voiceless victims of injustice. Restore us, O Lord Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls yet again. He summons his last ounce of energy to deliver himself to the pain of the cross that all men will be justified. Through the Gospels we read that Jesus' life was one of humility and love. One such act was the washing of his disciples' feet. Even though Jesus knew he would be betrayed, denied and left alone by his disciples, he chose to express his love for them, call them his friends and wash their feet. A humble, profound incident, action. His actions teaches us the kind of humility God wants us to have. Howsoever significant or insignificant we are, we all have the spirit of pride in varying degrees. It is one of the seven capital sins that hampers our relationship with the Lord. Emeritus Pope Benedict XVI in his book Jesus of Nazareth explains, the gesture of washing feet expresses precisely this. It is the servant love of Jesus that draws out our pride and makes us fit for God, makes us clean. Let us lay down our pride at the foot of the cross and reflect on the characteristics of a person with a servant's heart. Let us resolve to be a servant in the spirit of Jesus. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A humble submission, the deliverer of all mankind, cuts a tragic figure in the eyes of the mocking crowd. In the parable of the Pharisee and a tax collector, Jesus sought to enlighten the people to desist emulating the Pharisees who were sure of their own goodness because they rigorously practiced all the religious rules and traditions and observances. They assumed that love and acceptance of God was guaranteed. They looked at the weaknesses or faults of other people and concluded that they are unfit for God's kingdom. Jesus, in this parable, gives us a foretaste of the type of attitude that is most pleasing to God, that of the tax collector. For everyone who makes himself great will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be made great. The tax collector, having accepted his nothingness before God, cried out, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Entrusting himself to God's loving and divine mercy, he went home justified. Let us acknowledge our nothingness in order to be able to receive the fullness of God. Loving God, bestow upon us the virtues of humility and courage to discover and acknowledge our iniquities. Make us willing to strip ourselves of our self-righteousness and judgmental attitude 
and like the tax collector cry out in trust, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus' first bed was a manger, a cattle trough. Born a king of kings, yet so poor, so bereft of all things. At the end of his mission, despised and rejected, the cross is his bed, a symbol of suffering and shame. Though Jesus spoke of establishing the kingdom of God through the ascent on the cross, his disciples mistook it for a worldly kingdom. The mother of James and John promptly requests Jesus for important positions for her sons. Ambitious desires made her blind to the significance of drinking the cup, which according to the mind of Christ meant to serve others give one's life in ransom. Barclay's commentary gives us helpful insights. To drink this cup simply means to follow Christ wherever he may lead and to be like him in any situation life may bring. Life treated James and John very differently. For James, the cup was martyrdom, whereas for John, a natural death in his old age. For him, the cup was a constant discipline and struggle of Christian life throughout the years. The long routine with all its daily sacrifice, its daily struggle and its heart's breaks and its disappointments and its tears. Whatever be our state of life, let us seek the Holy Spirit to search and empty our hearts of all the worldly plans, ambitions, honor and power. Let us pray that like John, we stand true, loyal and committed to our calling and help establish the kingdom of God by our service to humanity. Merciful Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. Transform our hearts and minds. Fill us with the virtues of your kingdom, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Reflecting your face on earth, may we magnify your glory and in turn be light to the nations. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Three hours of agonizing suffering on the cross culminates in his death. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. This verse gives us a taste of the immensity of the love of God for his people. He yearns to have a filial relationship with them. In the wilderness, the wandering Israelites, his chosen people, fell to dissatisfaction and grumbling. In doing so, they displeased God who chose to chastise them for their unbelief. He sent venomous serpents among them, and many died on being bitten. They repented and God relented. Moses lifted up a bronze serpent on a standard as instructed by God, so that all those who looked upon it would be saved. Citing this incident in the Old Testament, Jesus himself affirms in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 14, 15, that just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that every one who believes in him may have eternal life. The church also teaches us that there is not, never has been, and never will be a single human being for whom Christ did not suffer. In other words, 
Jesus has died for me, and not me alone, but for all mankind. Let us pray for the grace to imbibe this truth in our heart. My loving Jesus, your Father made you who had no sin to be sin for our sake, so that in you we might become the righteousness of God. Lord, as we gaze at you on the cross in total trust, cleanse our heart of all impurities that through our own conversion we may draw all men to you. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The thirteenth station. Jesus is placed in the arms of his sorrowing mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Before the blood-spattered body of Jesus, is taken down from the cross and laid in her arms, Mary witnesses the final act of violence, the soldier thrusting his spear into Jesus' side. Once again, she recalls the words of Simeon, and the sword will pierce your soul also. She had followed him at a distance with only her look to strengthen and console him along the way. At last, the unspeakable suffering is over. That is her only consolation now. Could vengeful thoughts take hold of her, considering the heinous act committed against her most beloved son? Impossible. Mary was the special chosen one. In total communion with her son, Surely the very words of Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, echoes in her heart of hearts. In present times, too, we have people who emulated this virtue of Mother Mary. Saint John Paul II, Sister Rani Marie, and her family, Edith Staines. They played an important role in the salvation of souls by their generous response of forgiveness in the face of such brutality. Most of us may not have experienced atrocities of such magnitude, but have experienced cruelty by others against us or our family members. Can we too respond generously in such situations? Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. Sacred heart of Mary, be thou my salvation. O blessed Mother, continue to assist us on our earthly pilgrimage. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. The 14th station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. There is penetrating stillness on the hillside. The crowd is now subdued, bereft and poor to the end, as when he was born. He is wrapped in the linen cloth and laid in the tomb. Even the tomb was not his own. It was gifted by Joseph from Arimathea, who though a prominent member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He was a virtuous and righteous man, waiting for the coming of the kingdom of God. In his second letter, St. Paul counsels Timothy, For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner, for his sake. But bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Joseph of Arimathea displayed the greatest courage. He braved the possible resentment of Pilate and faced the hatred of the Jews when he requested the body of Jesus. 
let us resolve with God's grace to be men and women of courage and witnesses to the word of God, more so in our deeds. Holy God, endow us with the singleness of purpose in preaching the word by deed, even at the cost of hardship for the sake of Christ our Lord. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Let us end by praying for the Pope's intentions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.